a police chief is at a, at a conference, Captain Rasudo, thank you for holding down the fort, um, and various state reps who, who, who are with us today. Um, thank you for being here today, and, and, and of course, uh, uh, thank you for making the trek in, into our beautiful uh, uh, city hall, and our superintendent of schools. I'm so sorry, Alney. Um, uh, on behalf of, of the city of Chelsea, uh, it is my honor to welcome you today. Bienvenidos, bienvenidos. Uh, today, we join our Lieutenant Governor, Kim Driscoll, and our Secretary of the Executive Office of Housing and Livable Communities, Ed Augustus, in celebrating the awards for this year's Community Development Block Grant. In Chelsea, this grant will support our community with a large infrastructure project on Bloomingdale Street. The project will provide much needed updates in one of our most heavily trafficked parts of the city, serving residents who access the bus on Wash Ave and a large Chelsea Housing Authority building, which is home to over 200 seniors and disabled residents. In total, the upgrades will directly benefit over 3,000 residents, the vast majority of whom are low income. These types of investments demonstrate and emphasize our commitment to our most vulnerable uh, citizens and residents. The grant will also fund new and existing social service programs within the city, including citizenship and immigration services, English as a second language, retention of our youth in our schools, and senior food delivery. The, the significance of CDBG is its annual appropriation and consistent support of our local efforts. In the last three grant cycles here in Chelsea, the grant has supported our first time home buyers with down payment assistance, supported residents with substantial housing rehab programs, including accessibility enhancements, provided home based child care providers with business technical assistance have aided in affordable housing development acquisition, and most importantly, have helped thousands of residents through social service programming. Our city's partnerships with our community-based organizations are vital to the delivery of these services. La Colorativa, a driving social force in our community, administers the Citizenship and Immigration Service Program and has found ways to continuously expand and adapt its services. The Neighborhood Developers has been a key player in building affordable housing in Chelsea for many years, receiving city BG funds for the acquisition of 170 Cottage Street, which is currently under construction. And Chelsea Restoration Corporation, good morning, Marilyn, who is a, a long-standing provider and administers our HUD certified first-time homebuyer classes. Our budget to provide proactive social service is limited, and the CDBG program is a key resource for our community. We are extremely grateful to receive these funds and know that it continues to benefit our communities in profound ways. It is now my incredible honor to introduce our Lieutenant Governor, Kim Driscoll. Thank you, Fidel. Thank you, Fidel. It feels great to be back in Chelsea City Hall, um, a place that I spent a good amount of my time. I remember uh, Monday council meetings right at that desk uh, for several years and really appreciate all the work that goes into making this community thrive. And that's why I'm so pleased to be here with so many local leaders from this community and others doing the work every day to build strong communities, keep our uh, citizenry healthy, find ways to use these dollars. This is probably the most diverse funding that we get at the local level in terms of the flexibility to do so many things. And when I started in local government, I was actually an intern in the City of Salem's planning department, so learned a lot about CDBG, how to use it, how not to use it, and the opportunities that it presents for communities. So I'm really grateful to be here in this role, helping um, distribute $39 million in federal CDBG dollars to 65 communities across Massachusetts. If you add that along with the federal uh, CDBG dollars for entitlement communities, we've got almost a third of cities and towns receiving these dollars to really help strengthen what happens every single day. None of that happens, of course, without strong support at the federal level. 
Uh, we're so grateful to our federal partners, particularly Senator Markey's office and Congresswoman Ayanna Presley's office, I think both of whom have staff here today across the board recognizing the importance of these dollars. And our ability to do this work is really helped by having such great partners in the legislature. So it's great to be joined by Rep Garcia, who's here, who we just saw each other last night, Rep McGonigal from Everett, another beneficiary of these programs. Thank you for the partnership, not just on this program, but in so many ways. We're combing through the budget that was recently adopted. Lots of good investments that will strengthen our communities at, with state resources as well. So appreciate that continued opportunity to work together and do good things for our communities. And I think Senator DiDomenico's on his way as well. He's a partner on the Senate side. You know, as someone who's a former mayor, I certainly remember what it was like to have to dig for resources and to try and meet the demand of needs within your community and never always having the resources to, to really make it happen. And that's where these CDBG dollars come into play. They're just really critical. And you just heard uh, City Manager Maltez go through some of what they're spending it on. It's a broad array. It's going to look different in different communities, from housing rehab to public improvements to parks to economic development to citizenship and ESOL classes. It's a, just a broad range. Um, we want to make sure we're doing everything we can to try and support communities, opening doors wide to make local government access critical funding, support those needs, and stack and pack these resources in a way that allows you to really amplify the work. It's one of the reasons we're also focused on programs like Chapter 90, expanding opportunities there. Uh, the Municipal Vulnerability Program, MVP, we've added dollars there. When you think about leveraging other resources with your CDBG dollars, it's pretty exciting what we can capitalize on and move forward. This $39 million for 65 communities is meaningful dollars that are going to help our low and moderate income populations, our public safety upgrades, public improvement upgrades, and that impacts residents and communities across the state. Um, we really believe in the opportunity for cities and towns to have the, 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 the power and the resources and the tools to revitalize their downtown centers, to build uh, healthy, strong neighborhoods, whether it's for young adults, for seniors who want to age in place, and these resources are really a helping hand. So great to be back in Chelsea City Hall, a city that um, has been through ups and downs and has always, always been resilient and is going to use these resources to continue on that pathway. Things like, uh, I just want to point out, housing rehabs in Brewster and Everett, storm dam damage, drainage in West Springfield, food pantries, boys and girls clubs, like I could go on, so bread and butter things like sidewalks and parks. We're committing to trying to use this tool to make lives better in communities. And at the heart of this program, it's all about making lives better, in, lives better in all of our communities across the Commonwealth. So thank you all for joining us, for giving us an, opportun an opportunity to celebrate your good work. Putting a competitive application together is not easy. It takes time, it takes effort, but everyone's done such a great job. We're thrilled to be able to distribute these dollars. And with that, I, it's my pleasure to introduce someone who also is no stranger to city halls and municipal buildings, our, our Housing and Livable Community Secretary, Ed Augustus. Thank you, uh, Lieutenant Governor. It's great to be here in Chelsea. I want to thank the city manager for uh, not only hosting us today, but being such a great partner as we try to build more housing in Massachusetts. Chelsea is all in. Uh, all in. There's so many projects. Uh, matter of fact, you're all in so much, we're running out of money. But keep, keep the projects coming. Uh, we want to keep partnering with you. And I want to thank uh, your team here, and I want to thank the folks from the uh, Chelsea Housing Authority, which I've had a chance to visit, and doing some really innovative, cool things there. And we appreciate that part of the puzzle uh, and, and what you're doing here in Chelsea. Um, it's great to be here with the Lieutenant Governor. Obviously, um, Lieutenant Governor has been a leader in uh, municipal government, now it's state government, and it keeps us on our toes uh, because it's tough when you work for a boss who knows more about these things than you do. So you better bring your A game, and I, I really appreciate uh, her leadership uh, on all things housing. Uh, and I want to acknowledge some of our team that are in the back there from our Division of Community Services who sought through all of these uh, applications and, you know, uh, manage the process to get these important dollars out the door. So thank you to all of you for the good work that you do in supporting this, this program. You know, this program really is federalism uh, incarnate. If you think about it, the federal government presides, provides these resources to the state. We run our process with our local uh, municipalities uh, to get that money to where the rubber meets the road, uh, where community lives, where community happens. Uh, you know best uh, what the needs of your communities are. You know how to take these really essential dollars, plug them in, and fill gaps. Uh, 
make connections, uh, meet people where they are, and make sure they get what they need. And so it's such a great example of how government can work, the federal, state, and local government. Um, this community development block grants are designed to give our local communities the flexible resources they need to deal with a broad range of community development uh, efforts that will ultimately benefit our low and moderate income residents. That's who it's really focused on. Since 1975, the CDBG program has been operating uh, efficiently, which I believe is a testament to the program's success. Across the Commonwealth, these uh, awarded dollars will support rehabilitation of housing units, homelessness prevention, youth and elderly uh, elder services, support of food pantries, code enforcement, investment in infrastructure improvements, and so many more uh, critical projects. And today these awards uh, have more of an impact because of the lack of affordable housing uh, across the state. The funds awarded today will support the rehabilitation of 189 units of affordable housing across the state, 22 infrastructure projects. Uh, because we all want our residents to be able to live in a safe, secure, and dignified home. The resources we are announcing today will allow cities and towns to pursue projects uh, that have a real impact on the lives of Massachusetts residents. Right here in Chelsea, $925,000 grant will help to improve, as you heard, uh, sidewalks for the safety of our disability community, our seniors, and even parents uh, trying to uh, stroll their child uh, down the street. Uh, it will also help bolster social services such as English classes, youth services, and elderly food delivery. Uh, from infrastructure improvements in Agawam, Amherst, Southbridge, and West Springfield to housing rehabilitation in Mashpee, Lenox, Everett, and Greenfield, these grants matter to the communities in ways that are real and deeply felt. So I'm just excited uh, to be here. I'm excited for the opportunities that these grants are going to create. Congratulations to all of the communities that are receiving the awards, and we look forward to partnering with you in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Augustus. And I also want to recognize, our, I'm part of the former Mayor's Club now. I, I used to be part of the Mayor's Club. We've got two, I think, of our best and brightest here representing us, really doing cutting edge things in their communities. Mayor Mike Nicholson from Gardner, Mayor Nicole LaChapelle from East Hampton. Thanks for being here and for the work that you're doing. Part of this program is really trying to find ways to use these resources in new and novel ways to help grow what you're doing in a, in a meaningful way. And you two are really good at it, so I want to make sure I give you kudos for being here. We're happy to take some questions from any members of the press on this, and then we're gonna do a group photo, if we can, of folks who are receiving an award. Awesome, all right, why don't we ask, um, why don't we ask anyone who is receiving an award representing their communities to come forward? I wanna recognize uh, Senator Saldi Domenico, who has joined us, thank you for being here. Rep McGonigal, why don't we get our legislators up first, and then we'll do a big group photo with everyone, okay? Thanks all. This is the quietest this room has ever been, too. I'm just going to say that. Good to see you. How are you doing? Yeah.